Hello and welcome to part three of my second attempt to cross Wales in a straight line with my best friend and long-standing partner in adventure, Welsh Greg. So far we have covered 13 and a half miles and for the most part deviated no more than 25 metres from the line. A disappointing encounter at a private property the day before, however, had forced us 48 metres wide, which, according to my guide, was still a gold run, even if we didn't know it at the time. Today, we were aiming to cross the halfway point and penetrate as far into this massive forest, by far the largest of the trip, as possible by nightfall giving us the best chance of completing the remaining, mainly downhill, 16 miles in two days. Coming right up though, our most nerve-wracking obstacle of the entire line. A village whose houses we were traipsing straight through and whose residents were now almost definitely in. Oi, Mash, what the fuck are you doing, man? The plan was to strike early before most of them were up and about, but it was so cold that morning that we found it hard to move, let alone do anything else. They're frozen solid. Right, when Greg's finally plucked up the courage to leave that <laughs> position, um, a while, mate. <laughs> what we're going to do is we're not going to sit here and cook and brush our teeth and do all the things that we'd usually do in the morning. We're actually just going to pack our shit up and go. Go through the village. Oh yeah, we've got to go through a village, by the way. <laughs> through... Immediately, almost immediately. <laughs> and then cook at about 9am when hopefully it's warmed up a bit. That's the plan. So, come on, get, on, get out from there. <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> However, with the help of a couple of custard creams, we managed to stuff all of our frost-coated equipment into our bags and head back out into the sheep. Lovely Welsh lamb. Oh, hello. Here's our village, Cumberland. This is what we've got to soldier through. Oh, I'm not looking forward to this. Down you go. But this time, the nerves Jesus. didn't really stem from the possibility of straying really far from the line. It was more to do with upsetting and frightening the little old ladies and the housewives that were almost definitely pottering about at the kitchen sink at around this time, looking out into their lovely gardens, admiring the robins. The last thing they'd want to see is two camouflaged blokes sneaking across their lawn. But nonetheless, our first house approached. It's this house here, man, this white one. Is it? Yeah. Let's go for it. Now the line went straight through this house, slightly to the left, so that's the side we chose to hug around. Problem was, it looked incredibly brambly and slow moving, and there was a good chance that we'd be spotted. But it didn't really matter, because we weren't technically on their land, and we were soon arcing around the back end of their garden. Only 13 metres offline, and apparently undetected. Fair bit of brambles here to deal with. But at least we're out of sight now. The line then took us out into this kind of odd field with a caravan in it. A brief break of sorts before leading us back into the action. I mean, whose house are we in? <laughs> it was weird that there wasn't a house connected to this garden, but we weren't complaining. With potentially no one watching us, we were able to follow the line down into this small river. But we're bang on line, mate. And straight up into the next garden, which was next to a house. I think we've got to go down here now. Okay. Did you put that rubbish bag in that thing? Yep. I think they'd rather that. Yeah, definitely. It's not great, I know, but... Again, the river took us briefly away from the heat of the gardens. Oh! 
and in Greg's case, into its ice cold waters. Bombs away. <laughs> oh, mate. You weren't lying there, were you? <laughs> and back into the fields on the left, where we thought we may have gotten past the worst of it. Crack on, mate. We were wrong. Mate, just watch out for this house on the right. Oh, bollocks, it's going to be right in view. <laughs> we couldn't be more in view. With at least three kitchen windows facing us, all we could do was get down that bank as quickly as possible and hope that we weren't being watched. It was no longer just about scaring little old ladies. It was crucial that we got through this gap in the houses. If we didn't, who knows how far round we'd have to go. This was arguably this the most important few seconds of the trip. This is so bait. <laughs> down in it, mate, down in it. Down in there. And we'll go around the shed. We were through, around the shed and onto the drive, veering 16 metres off at our furthest point. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> there was technically one more property to skirt through. Shit, put that back. Mm. <laughs> Let me get over it first. But it was more of a building site than a garden, and as soon as I was under this tree... Why you didn't go over that, I'll never know. We were gone. Up you go, boy. When I say gone, I mean to the top of this hill, where we indulged in a well-earned breakfast. After breakfast, we reflected on our assault of Cumbelan. Unbelievable Yeah. that we didn't get seen back there. You know, Ridiculous. with all the interaction we had yesterday. Yeah, we walked through probably four or five little gardens or driveways of houses and nobody. Everyone was out. having a lion. Yeah. It was now time to make some serious ground again. Yes, we'd made it through the village, but it was easy to ignore what a pathetic distance we'd moved in four hours. In fact, it had dawned on us over breakfast that at the rate we were going, we probably wouldn't make it to the coast by Friday. And that was actually pretty bad because we only had enough food for two more days. Yeah. But for now, a farm to sneak past. What was that? Sheep. Was it? Nah, mate, that's someone, isn't it? Yeah, it's a gate slamming, isn't it? Once past the farm, we endured a torrid time, puffing our way up this hill, baking in our jackets under the midday sun as we battled our way up the brambles. Further up, though, we enjoyed the swift seclusion of these sapling dotted fields, which led us to a much more handsome looking pine forest. Nice tall trees, this'll do. Yeah, these look all right, we can see through them. Yeah, I can see the other side. I'll take this sort of thing, mate. Yeah, definitely. At least it's shaded. Yeah, it's lovely and cool. May have spoke too soon. <laughs> <laughs> of course, tall pine forests are all well and good, but it's better if the trees stay upright. Oh, come on. <laughs> wow. But they can also make good playgrounds. <gasps> Monkey fault. What an anticlimax. <laughs> Out on the other side, we could see for miles. Right, here's what we've got ahead of us. Immediately, it seems like a pig farm, which is new. Then we're going right past pff, at least two farms, mm. by the looks of it. And then in the very distance... <laughs> it's a daunting prospect of a big hill covered in pine. 
Yeah, and that is the gigantic wood that we're aiming to be at by, we said three o'clock, we have no idea. Let's go. <laughs> this is something I didn't mention, which looks like an extremely steep ravine. <laughs> looks like an almost impassable ravine. But as steep and deep as this gorse-coated ravine was, it almost isn't worth showing, purely because of how big the next one was in 500 meters time. Yeah. Yeah, isn't it? Oh, I think we go about a mile ago. <laughs> Imagine if we walked across the top of it if it was flat. <laughs> It'd be like 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah. We emerged from the ravine and faced our next hurdle. Is this the pig field? Except it wasn't a pig field at all. Turns out it was just sheep. False alarm. <laughs> next point for concern. At this farm. Wrong again. Oh my giddy aunt. Well, here we go. Yep, <laughs> we cannot, we haven't got time. Oh my fucking god. Slowly but surely, we eked our way down the loose scree. Greg joining me on his arse as far as the safety of this tree, whose trunk proved a useful anchor. Yeah, it's gonna go down here. Oh. <laughs> you swinging. Oh. Mate, you were at some weird angle there. The steepest part was still below us. Whoa. Luckily, the only safe way down was to tack to the left slightly, which is exactly where we needed to be heading. Oh. Right, let's fill the water bottles. While it was fairly easy for us to top up our water supply, the same couldn't be said for our food supply, which was depleting by the hour. So we began to cook up a plan. Hang on, mate, look at this place. That looks big. And that's just to the north of the line, about 16 kilometers Swath. away. That could be the one, mate. So if, if, so what can we do? If I ring Verity. Yeah, we need to find out what the name is first. Yeah. So if I say to Verity, when we cross the A44, what's yeah. the name of the village about a kilometer north? Yeah. And are there any shops there? Yeah, that sounds, yeah. Yes, we're working it out, class, mate. Class, mate. Our idea involved paying a shop owner or employee to meet us on the main road with some supplies tomorrow. But for now, we were keen to get out of this gorge, which it looked like we would be traveling straight up for the time being. As incredible as it was, this gorge had slowed us down again. It had been tricky to enter and to traverse up. But all of that would be nothing compared to trying to climb out the other side. This is our way up, I think, mate. Better Looks than... fucking steep. Oh, where do we start? <laughs> oh. Good. Yeah, it is, man. You don't want to fall, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Yeah, there's just enough to hold on to. Once I was a safe distance away, Greg began to follow, using the same branches and roots that I'd used and any words of advice that went with them. This branch is just solid enough. Okay. Look at that. Wow. There's, um, yeah, there's a thicker one. Oh no, you've got the thick one. one. <laughs> yeah. You got over it. I went over it, but Somehow, yeah. Nice one, mate. I think we're good here. Once we were over the steeper first few meters, it slowly began to peter out. The constant presence of small trees, roots, and bushes acted not only as a safety net, but as a trellis that we could use to clamber on up right to the top. Okay, now, track. Road. Okay, gradient. That is. Any steeper would have been impossible. For them, man. Right, mate. Okay, now to go right through a massive farm. Oh boy. 
There it is. We knew from the view before the ravine that this one would be tricky. I think we're going to the right of that one, mate. Are we? Yeah. Fuck! Now, mate, that's exactly the way the residents of the farm is pointing. I know. All we could do as we approached was to try to figure out exactly where it was we were heading. Where we're heading is that fucking sheet of corrugated iron. Is it? Yeah. Oh wait, there's a gate to the left. There's a road. Fuck, that is bait, isn't it? It looked like we had no choice but to head for the gate to the right of the corrugated iron. We can't do that, especially with them watching. Let's look a bit of urgency about us. We figured that because there was a strong chance that someone was watching us from one of the windows, that moving fast whilst doing some sort of army signal was the best way to go. We didn't plan it, it just sort of happened. <laughs> As we approached the gate, our initial thoughts on the corrugated iron fence were confirmed. As in, it would have been a terrible idea to try and climb it in plain view of the farmhouse. No one coming yet. And with that, we slipped through the iron gate and onto the tracks where it looked like we may have gotten away with it. Make this a quick one. Mate. That has genuinely surprised even me. I can only think they're having their ploughman's lunch because that would usually yeah that would usually have at least someone knocking about but well, we're not out the woods yet mate no, maybe the army signals worked okay up to the corner and we're away yeah. Yeah, corner, right? that's a good test pass splitting apart liquor to all sorts <laughs> And so, as we passed through this conifer curtain and out onto the moors beyond, we were into our next chapter. That's great news. <laughs> A chapter which was hopefully all about making good miles. But despite the optimism, we first needed to stop and eat, and secondly, take care of our plan, whose purpose was to ensure that we could continue eating for the rest of the trip, if we failed to make that ground quick enough. If I could get through to Verity, I could use her to extract some crucial information from Google Earth. Going back to that village, if you can find out if there's any sort of shop or farm shop there. I don't know if you need to put the man down, perhaps. This would be for tomorrow. But what is there, a BP garage? BP garage, mate. That'll do. Yeah, how far do you think it is from the line? 0.27 miles. Mate, that's amazing. Thanks to Verity, we were halfway there. Now time to ring them and see if it was the shop that we thought it was, and then see if they were actually open, considering the new situation. Sorry, just say, is it P-O-N-T-E-R-W-Y-D? Yeah, okay. And, um, how, well, you might not, don't worry if you don't know the answer to this question, but <laughs> how far do you think you are from the River Wye? <laughs> That should narrow it down on the Aberystwyth side. Yeah, yeah, off, off, the, off the River Wye. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, that's fine. We'll probably be seeing you tomorrow afternoon. Thank you very much. Cheers. Bye. Brilliant, mate. They're reduced hours, but the reduced hours are nine to five. The plan was 80% complete, and as a result, we felt a lot more relaxed and able to focus on the task at hand. All we needed to do was call them up again tomorrow morning when the owner was in and convince him to get someone to meet us down the road. Right now though, we'd already gone all the way over the moors and could now see our huge forest in the distance. But as usual, that wasn't all we could see. Pretty near this farm, mate. Really? I think slightly to the left. Okay. <laughs> Close enough. Hmm. I'm on my ass, but not because I've fallen over for once. Just can't deal with the pain of these toenails digging in. Ah, shit. As we approached the farm, it did look like we were heading to the trees just to the left, but the sighting of a blue-shirted man in the driveway was a cause for concern as we vaulted our way into his horse field. 
It seemed that, just like everyone else today, Blue Shirt had gone inside, giving us the opportunity to sneak up onto the back end of his property. Look at that bench. Before sliding our way down into today's penultimate valley, where in the spirit of the trip, we would receive our next dose of human interaction. No, they are, mate. They're by the red car. We definitely have a person. We're gonna have to. Oh, there's someone sitting down with a white hat. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's see what their reception is first. Hi. Um, we. I know it sounds odd. But <laughs> we're gonna cross the river. We're gonna wade through. We have to follow a GPS track and then try and be the people to cross it in the shortest distance. It's a bit of a wacky idea. Yeah, yeah. I've never seen somebody walk down that field before. <laughs> the river was another boots off job. Yeah. So while my boots were off, I took the opportunity to wrap my throbbing swollen toes with bandages from the first aid kit in the hopes that if they were at least knocking into something soft, it might hurt less. You might, I'll steer you towards the line. Like up the river, yeah, up the river. Blimey, that's cold. Ah, my toe. Fuck. Oh, fucking hell, mate. God, I'm in a terrible time back here. Cold, mate. Yeah. Our legs are going to be dropping off in a minute. Oh, Wait. Shit. You have an absolute mess. Thankfully for me, our exit point on this freezing river was just a spiky stone's throw away. Lovely, mate. Perfectly on line. Ah. Mr. Philpot watched us strap our boots back on before surely smiling as we strolled past this annoyingly placed bridge and then wishing us well. What a lovely, lovely house. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Nah, we're in luck, mate. We don't have to cross it. <laughs> Having just gladly shaved the left bank of the river that we'd just crossed, I had an incredibly close shave of my own. So I just got snagged on the fence and I thought, I came away very easily. I thought, that's strange. Surely I've ripped my trousers. I haven't, but I have got this. A rusty. A rusty bit of iron, <laughs> bit of iron that somehow <laughs> missed my leg. That was your closest shade to tetanus yet. <laughs> Happy days, and I haven't even got the jab. But how far had our tetanus-free legs carried us? Well, not that far, to be honest. But we were now climbing up the back end of the eastern wall of the Y Valley, and providing we could get over the river and the A44 without any issues, it was straight up into the dark, grim setting of the giant forest that we planned to camp in. We probably wouldn't escape the forest until about 10 a.m. tomorrow when we would emerge 1,500 feet up into the moors beyond. Right now, though, we could enjoy a nice, relaxing stroll down to the river. Okay, guys, we have got a car. Uh, it's a farmer, it's his field. We're we heading for this fence, mate. Seems to be watching us. Okay, he's facing away at least. Okay, he hasn't even seen us cross the fence. Okay, we're good, are we following this? We can see our big wood up there that we're gonna plow into and hopefully camp in, but first, pretty big obstacle. What's that, Greg? Get, mate. It's where the A44 is. Must be down there somewhere. It's quite a big road. Yeah. What's the big obstacle, Greg? The Y. The River, the River Y. y. Very big river. Oh, there it is. <laughs> oh my God, how do we not see that? <laughs> okay, now. Yeah, very big river later on in its course, but hopefully we've caught it yeah. at a, a fledgling size. Yeah. Shit, mate. That looks steep and gorsy. Uh, okay, let's give this a go. <laughs> All right. Yeah. My name's Tommy Davis and this is Steve. Scree gorse bank <laughs> leading onto main road. <laughs> oh, 
think you're on your ass there, mate. Whee! <laughs> from which way? Fuck. Some steep shit today. Mate. Right, onto the Y. Oh mate, we've got a farm right here. Oh. The final stretch down to the Y turned out to be relatively hassle free. And although there were farmers active in the area. Oh, is he the one feeding them over there? Possibly. A big herd. Yeah. We were pretty safe on these marshy open fields meaning we could focus our thoughts on the river itself here we go folks moment of truth how deep is the why how deep is the why is the why yeah knee height in it that's right. amazing it. it's been held up over there by a little waterfall yeah, yeah that's definitely warmer it's not warm but no, it's, warmer, it's definitely it's like oh mate it's a bit deeper than i thought yeah, I think it's like oh. oh heavens. Oh good heavens. Whoa. Yeah. Shit. Fuck it out, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh mate. How did we arrive at the conclusion that that was knee deep? <laughs> mate, look looking from this side, it's clearly deep. <laughs> It like drops off. That's probably with the sun. Yeah. Well, that's our Y crossing done and dusted. The tranquil waters and grassy pastures of the opposite side made for the perfect little place to stop, fill up our water bottles and dry off for a bit in the late afternoon sun. Ultimately though, it proved to be too nice. How's it going? Uh, the plan was to soldier on up there today. Uh, but as you can see, the sun has moved quite far since we've been here because we've dilly-dallied that much <laughs> as usual, sorting things out, filling the water bottles. And then we noticed that the time was, was, tick, was very late. Um, so <laughs> to cut a long story short, we, we're choosing to camp here on this track. And um, yeah, we're going to hunker down here, um, have a little fire, just a little one down there in the dip. Tomorrow, We've got to make up some ground though, we've got to get really far, but I think it'll be okay. The pines look big and spacious, and then it's moors for miles, so tomorrow's a big day. But this evening, we're chilling. We're chilling by the river Y. Lovely spot. We have people, <coughs> they don't really seem interested. <coughs> and that's if they've seen us. I think we should just act like uninterested as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They'll never know we were here. <laughs> well, except they do. <laughs> <laughs> They've already seen us. Look at that. Okay, so we think we've got some pottery over at Trench 2, but what the hell is going on over here in Trench 1? Greg, give us the lowdown. It's rubbish. <laughs> over in Trench 2, we now have fire. Tent's going over there, because this is sheer rock with a layer of moss on top, we've learnt. And we're about to eat. I think we'll see you in the morning. Because this GoPro is shit. God. Whoa. Having endured another minus two degree night, we were up at the ungodly hour of 6am. Such was our eagerness today to make it up and over the moors and down to the village of Pontawid, eight miles away, where we could hopefully restock on food. Yeah. Okay, man. On we go. Nice and early. With the hopes of getting far today. Oop. Oop. <laughs> the short trip up to the tree line and over the halfway point of the yeah, trip really was boggy but farmer free. Could have slept in there, man. <laughs> Probably wouldn't want to sleep in there. The burning question now was, how hard was this forest going to be? 
Well, we've missed one section of wood because it's been knocked down. But it does raise the question, if that imagery is old, what else are we going to come across? Because what we don't want is really small trees. They're impossible to move through. Let's see what this first patch is like. Not too bad, eh? Yeah, I'll take this all day. But it weren't gonna be like this all day. It was for a while, if not slightly worse. Come here, big trees. Then some big trees came. Oh, yes. Then some horizontal ones. But very soon, things were gonna get a lot smaller and a hell of a lot worse. Gone through such temperature changes in the last hour. From teeth shatteringly cold to fucking <laughs> sweltering in, the ma Swelter, in a matter of minutes. Yeah. Only a quarter of the way in, we pressed on into the unknown. Fucking hell. That's a barrier, isn't it? Ooh. Oh. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Whoa! Oh shit, mate. They look small. That is not what I wanted to see. Right. This ain't gonna be good. Let's just hope it's short. But it wasn't short. This twig snapping, energy zapping crawl went on for a whole 200 meters, which doesn't <laughs> sound much, but believe me, it is. This is what I was praying we wouldn't come up against. At points, we were able to stand up and charge through, but I'm not sure it was any more energy efficient. You what? Oh, thank God. When we did finally reach a section of slightly taller trees, it felt amazing. This is heaven. <laughs> I know. Sounds ridiculous, isn't it? But. This is genuinely very pleasurable. <laughs> but all that exertion was starting to take its toll. And by the time we reached this gravel track, slap bang in the heart of the forest, we desperately needed to eat. Ooh. Wanna eat here? Yeah, mate, definitely. Oh, Jesus. That was rough, isn't it, mate? Really rough. Having done all of that on close to an empty stomach, this particular batch of kippers and couscous was by far the most needed yet. Greg commenting that he felt particularly zapped just before we tucked in. Hopefully though, all this protein, fat and carbs in our bellies would sort us right out and we could tackle the rest of this forest head on. Right, on we go. Let's just pray that these woods are now kind to us because they haven't really been so far. But what I didn't realize was that while the food was working wonders on me. Come on, stay like this. The same wasn't true for Greg. Oh, hello, son. As we passed through the various sections of trees and all the varying degrees of difficulty that came with them, Greg was still quietly harboring a lack of energy, strength, and a low mood. 750 meters to the end, mate. Things that I'm sure he hoped would improve as his body digested his food, which he does inhale, to be fair. But things that were in actual fact early telltale signs of an Addisonian crisis. Just one more uphill. Come on. As we descended down this ravine, I think I must have sensed that Greg was struggling. You all right? but I just presumed that that was maybe his way of coping mentally with the brutality of the forest. Right at the bottom of the ravine though, off camera, Greg slumped back onto the moss and called out to me that he felt dizzy and weak. Straight away, I got him some water and his steroid pills, which he took two of immediately, and monitored his condition closely, talking to him regularly. Just keep updating me how you feel. Yeah. He seemed fairly stable in that he was able to speak and move a bit, so I remained fairly composed, but inside, I was scared. Because if Greg's condition did deteriorate, which for all we knew it could, 
We were in just about the worst location to receive medical help I could possibly think of. There was no way I was carrying a 13 stone unconscious Greg out of that ravine on my own. So we acted fast. Greg luckily just about able to muster the strength to walk downstream, whereas luck would have it, there was another gravel track about 150 meters away. But we weren't really that much better off here. Two miles from the nearest actual road, hard to find and probably blocked off with a barrier, this was not a good place to receive medical help. We had to get Greg somewhere safe. Just confirm that, like, uh, to me, I'm, I'm a bit out of it, that I think it's that way, you follow that road there, but you just check that. I'm thinking whether we, like, slowly make it down that road, because it's still not great, really, if I start to deteriorate anymore, for you? Yeah. Let's do it, man. Let's get down towards that farm. So we made our way further down the hill, straight towards the main road and to safety. But in a cruel twist of fate, we were stopped in our tracks by none other than a Welsh farmer. How are you doing? Guys? How are you doing? We're making our way down to the A44. Up there? Yeah. Left? Yeah. Oh, really? The way goes. Can't get down through it. We were doing something where we were crossing uh, in a straight line across the country. But basically, so we have to cross many fields, I know. <laughs> but basically, I have, uh, I have to take these certain pills. And at the moment, they're, I'm not in a good way. So I need to get down, basically. But I don't mind. I'm all right. But I, need, I might need to, if it's uphill, I might need to go that way. We have to cross the river if you go down that There's no bridge, is it? Ah, uh, right. Yeah. Uh, we have to cross the river, the big river. Yeah. We did it. We did that we yesterday. <laughs> Is anybody coming to meet you then? Yeah, Hopefully, I, can get, yeah. I, I can get somebody, yeah. Well, I think it's way down to the road now. Follow the track down there for the field. Yeah. You see those three sheep on the back over there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The wall goes up there and it comes out for me and we'll go back with it. Is that yeah. alright? Yeah. Thanks, yeah, right. mate. Yeah. I think that's probably best. Well, yeah, boys, man, have, yeah. you, have you heard Thanks. the news about this coronavirus? Yeah, yeah well, we, we, we left like almost a week ago now, so it wasn't the same as it is now. So <laughs> really bad. I know, really bad. At least you know we haven't got it. Yeah. <laughs> Deal. Hopefully. Thanks. Take care, boys. Thanks, Take mate. Care. Have a good day. Shut up. As we passed through the man's farm and down towards the Y again, Greg seemed to be on the mend his double dose of steroid pills perhaps doing the trick. And with his sister now heading for the A44, all I had to do was make sure he got there all right. But what about the mission? If Greg goes home and I go back and continue, have I still failed? Well, unfortunately, yes. Two miles we'd traveled from that point to get to the road, a huge fail in straight line missioning terms. And I think the disappointment of that was starting to sink in. It was a totally different kind of disappointment to the last time though. Last time, I only had myself to blame. This time, no one was to blame. The moment that Greg's life was potentially at risk, the line became completely secondary and Greg's safety became paramount. Addisonian crises can be fatal if not treated and no straight line mission is worth risking a life for. In terms of me going back afterwards and completing the line like I did last time, that's something I thought long and hard about, but ultimately, I didn't see the point. Last time, it was about wanting to prove to myself that I could go back and finish it. This time, all I wanted to do was succeed, to be honest. And once that was out the window, it was kind of over for me. The idea of a three-day consolation trek to the sea, in the storm that was now due, without Greg, and most likely without my big toenails, was just too depressing a thought. Well, as we sit here and wait for our lift on the side of the A44, uh, we're reflecting. And, you know, it was a great trip up until that fateful point. It was a gruelling trip. Obviously, we're, we're gutted that we um, didn't get the opportunity in the end to go on and succeed this time. But it's one of those things, there's no point dwelling on it. It was a critical decision to make in that moment and we had to make it. There's no point messing about in those moments. Um, so we've just got to move on and almost forget about it, really, in a way, <laughs> you know, and just look forward to the next one. Know that there'll be more times. Yeah. You made that call. Exactly. 
we've put ourselves in a situation where we're both still alive mm -hmm. and um, we can have another pop at this. As long as some car doesn't come off the A44 now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that was it. Just like that, I was joining Greg in the car to Abergavenny where we would say goodbye to each other. Yeah, man. Absolutely brilliant, man. It's been nice. I then embarked on one of the most surreal train journeys I've ever had. An entire train to myself. An empty vessel in which to reflect on everything. The next evening, I spoke to Greg on the phone, and he told me that when he got home the day before, he felt the need to make a huge bowl of pasta, and that his salt levels were so low that he was adding salt by the handful, and it wasn't even touching the sides. His body was severely dehydrated and lacking in lots of key minerals and nutrients too, which took him days to replenish. The reason for all this? Well, he should have been double dosing and ideally drinking much more water and eating more food. Because he'd been exercising that much recently and had been completely fine, that combined with perhaps slightly underestimating the extent of the physicality of this challenge meant he just didn't think he needed to. He was still learning the boundaries with Addison's and this was the biggest lesson for him yet. One that he's definitely learnt from for any future expeditions. And just a quick word from me everyone from the comfort and safety of my own home. Um, firstly I just want to say that I'm just as gutted as some of you will be. As is Greg that we couldn't succeed this time and as you can imagine I've never been more determined to cross a country in a straight line at this particular moment in time. That's why if everything goes to plan I'll be travelling out to Norway this summer in a couple of weeks uh, against all odds in a bid to conquer that uh, and then obviously six months later it's back to the original plan Luxembourg and Scotland and I cannot bloody wait for those either. In the meantime, thank you to everyone who has supported me by watching this video, liking it, commenting on it, uh, and a special, special thank you to everyone who has supported me on Patreon. For those of you who aren't on my Patreon page yet, there's no better time than now to sign up, because coming shortly you'll have all the behind the scenes and bonus footage from this mission, as well as the first mission across Wales. You'll have the lockdown mission from back in April, and various other juicy offerings. But coming up on YouTube will be a line review video and a pack list video for this mission. So you can look out for that. If not, I'll see you in Norway.